This was the first FA Cup meeting of these two in over 100 years. You wonder if perhaps they've spent that time saving up goals for us all to enjoy. The first of many came from Southampton's Nathaniel Klein. His first for well over a year to mark his 50th Saints appearance. And it deserved a bigger audience, really. That was on 22 minutes. On 28, it was 2-0 thanks to another wonder strike, albeit from a more regular source of such things. Ricky Lambert thumping home the seventh goal of another good season for him personally and the 13th FA Cup goal of his career. Lambert was one of a number of changes made by Maurizio Pochettino on the day. There were five, in fact, from the New Year's Day defeat here against Chelsea. Two others were the centre-halves, which might explain the space afforded to Sam Vokes shortly after the restart. 11 for the season for him, game on. These are two sides who have lofty league hopes in their respective divisions, but neither held back. The next goal came just six minutes later through Burnley's main man, Danny Ings. 2-2 with a third of the game still to play. 20 goals for Ings by the first weekend in January. Surely he'll be playing top-flight football next season, whether the Clarets go up or not. In league play, these clubs had last met just under two years ago. Jay Rodriguez was a Burnley player that day. £7 million and 18 goals later, he scored the inevitable one against them here. Ward Prowse on the first, Heaton couldn't hold it, Rodriguez couldn't miss. Cue obligatory lack of celebration. On 73 minutes, the home side restored the two-goal lead they'd lost. It was another fine solo effort, this time from sub Adam Lalana, who'd been enjoying a rest for the first hour of this game. He'll have enjoyed that goal even more, though. His fifth in this competition, quite a return for someone who's only played in it 11 times. That ended the contest, although before the end there was just time for Kevin Long's first Burnley goal. It was the seventh and last of an enthralling cup tie.